Welcome to the Blade of Tech Channel's 84th edition, second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of January 10th through January 16th in space exploration, science, and technology. January 10th, 1946. The U.S. Army detected radar signals reflected off of the moon's surface on this date. A 180-cycle wave pulse with a one-quarter second duration was beamed by the Army Signal Corps from the Evans Signal Laboratories in Belmar, New Jersey, from a heavily modified SCR-271 radar antenna. The echo was received 2.4 seconds later, proving that radio waves could penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. The experiment was supervised by Lt. Col. John H. DeWitt, the broadcasting pioneer and amateur astronomer first came up with the idea in 1940. His early amateur attempts were unsuccessful, but his chance came a few years later, after World War II, courtesy of the U.S. Army. During the war, DeWitt had developed radar for locating mortars and directing counterfire. After the war, DeWitt took a job as a consultant to the then relatively unknown Nashville radio station WSM. After a year on the job, he was appointed president of the station and its sister channels, a position he would hold until he retired in 1968. WSM traditionally played country music in the nighttime hours, when listeners from around the United States would tune in. Because of WSM's wide reach, musical acts from all across the East United States came to Nashville in hopes of getting to perform on the station. Over time, as more acts and recording companies came to Nashville, the city became known as the center of the country music industry. DeWitt died in 1999. He was 92. January 11, 1920, Smithsonian published in a 79-page pamphlet, Goddard's A Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes on this date. The Massachusetts scientist's work laid out the concept of using a multi-stage rocket for exploration of outer space and reaching the lunar surface. Goddard's reward for this publicity was to be ridiculed by his fellow scientists and the popular media. The New York Times, showing then as now, the paper's propensity for scolding elitism and populism not well grounded in facts, was extremely critical in an editorial published seven days later. The paper ridiculed Goddard's scientific training at the Worcester Polytechnic Institute and Clark University and repeated the sneering comments of Goddard's scientific peers at larger or more exclusive institutions, that he was at best a misled dreamer and at worst, a sensationalist. 23 years later, the German army was killing thousands of civilians in rocket attacks. And 35 years later, the world stood in tense horror as the US and the USSR built hundreds and then thousands of nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. Nevertheless, the Times did not publish a retraction to its hit piece until well after Goddard's death in 1945, and the paper did so as more of a PR stunt than anything else. Why? Apollo 11 landed on the moon in July of 1969. January 12, 1997, the fictional HAL 9000 computer became operational on this date in the 1968 movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. In the movie, Hal, the third of his line, is a sentient computer installed in the U.S. spacecraft Discovery 1, whose mission is to explore the planet Jupiter. Unbeknownst to the astronauts on Discovery 1, the scientific mission is a cover for a classified investigation of an extraterrestrial in origin artifact in orbit around Jupiter, which was discovered after a similar artifact was unearthed on the surface of the moon. Hal's programming cannot reconcile the classified mission with the unclassified mission, and the computer concludes that only the murder of the crew will enable the classified mission to succeed. Only one of the five astronauts, Dr. David Bowman, survives Hal's plot. As of 2021, artificial intelligence has yet to be achieved in computing devices. Although touted as AI, self-learning programs typical of today's top-end software are not sentient by any measure. Nevertheless, advances in technology have raised the alarm in the 21st century 
about the dangers of unfettered development of artificial intelligence. Enjoying our content? We issue new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe so you stay current. Subscribing is free, and we encourage you to browse our 350 plus video library where you can find more milestone installments for every day of the year, as well as tech documentary segments, current events in space exploration, science and technology, gameplay recordings, reviews of tools and equipment, and reviews of small electronics and appliances. Each video is tagged with an alphanumeric identifier in the title, so searches for particular segments are quick and easy. January 13th, 1404. English alchemists were forbidden to use their knowledge to create precious metals on this date. The Act of Multipliers was passed by Parliament during the reign of Henry IV, declaring the use of transmutation to multiply gold and silver to be a felony. Great alarm was felt at the time lest any alchemist should succeed in his projects and perhaps bring ruin upon the state by furnishing boundless wealth to some designing tyrant who would make use of it to enslave the country. In 1689, Anglo-Irish chemist Robert Boyle lobbied for repeal of the act. What was viewed to be element synthesis in the 15th century was revealed in the 17th century as mere chemical formulation and dissolution of compounds, or molecules, of multiple elements. Real elemental synthesis would not occur until 1937 with the discovery of technetium, element 43, which occurs but rarely in nature. The first element synthesized that did not occur in nature was curium, element 96, in 1944 by scientists in the Manhattan Project. January 14, 1966, Colonel Sergei Korolev, chief designer of the Soviet space program, died on the operating table during colon surgery on this date. He was 59. His death is often marked as the beginning of the end of Soviet ambitions for manned exploration of the Moon and Mars, although his true impact on that outcome is likely more nuanced. Korolev was an aeronautical engineer that had been imprisoned during one of Stalin's purges in the 1930s, saved only by the German invasion of Russia in 1941. His eventual rehabilitation during the war and subsequent value in the Soviet struggle to match the US and rocket technology cemented his place in the Soviet scientific hierarchy in the 1950s. Korolev and his legendary intensity are widely credited with the success of the Soviet ICBM programs, as well as the Sputnik satellite and the Vostok manned space programs, although certainly these successes were built on the talent of hundreds of engineers and scientists. Korolev is also widely criticized for his siloed approach to program management that alienated his management peers at critical junctures of the Soviet space program. Nevertheless, the Soviet, and subsequently the Russian, space programs have arguably never been the same since. Have you agreed with our choices, or do you think there are other events in space and tech history that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for other space and tech milestones, let us know. We'll credit milestones we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. January 15, 1950, U.S. five-star General Henry H. Hap Arnold died on this date. Born in 1886, he was 64. Arnold was commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II and the only U.S. Air Commander to ever attain the five-star rank of General of the Armies. Arnold was especially interested in the development of sophisticated aerospace technology to give the United States an edge in the achievement of air superiority and fostered the development of such innovations as jet aircraft, rocketry, rocket-assisted takeoff, and supersonic flight. However, after a lengthy career as an Army aviator and commander that spanned the two world wars, he retired from active service in 1945. Thus, he missed the separation of the Air Force from the Army and the Air Force's nascent efforts in manned space exploration during the 1950s. January 16, 1946, the U.S. testing program of German V-2 rockets was initiated on this date. 
The army had overrun the Middlework Door V2 production facility in the Hartz Mountains of central Germany on April 11, 1945, and shipped sufficient parts to build about 100 V2 rockets to the U.S. on May 22. 300 freight cars arrived at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico in late 1945, and General Electric was contracted by Army Ordnance to assemble and arrange launches. GE had significant difficulty in assembling V2s, as many of the parts were damaged or otherwise unusable. There were no detailed assembly plans other than those from the UK project Operation Backfire, which had documented its earlier similar efforts. The company drew heavily on advice from the captured German scientists from Operation Paperclip that were posted nearby. The first V-2 was test-fired on March 15, 1946, and the first liftoff was performed on April 16. The rocket malfunctioned and the flight was terminated after only 19 seconds. This was to be a common outcome. NASA says that only 50% of the rockets launched by GE were successful. The actual number of V-2 rockets launched from White Sands seems to vary depending on the source, from as low as 60 to as high as 73, a figure reported by NASA. The last V-2 rocket was launched in September. 1952. On December 28, 2021, Super Bowl winning and Hall of Fame pro football coach John Madden died. Madden was an NFL coach from 1967 to 1978, all in Oakland, California, after which he became a TV sports broadcaster. From a tech standpoint, Madden was known for three innovations. The first was the use of a telestrator on TV for sports. A telestrator is used to draw on the viewer's screen. Madden pioneered its use in the explanation of plays. The second innovation was the inclusion of a game's score and statistics in a box on the viewer screen, an improvement that Fox Sports agreed to try in 1994. And the third innovation was the development of football for gaming both for consoles and the personal computer. Madden insisted on realistic gameplay, which game developer EA struggled to execute. The launch of Madden Football for the Sega Genesis in 1992 cemented the game's dominance for the next three decades. In 2022, Madden Football is still the best-selling video game franchise. Madden played college football at the University of Oregon and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and was drafted by the NFL's Philadelphia Eagles in the 21st round, 244th overall, in 1958. He suffered a career-ending injury in his first training camp, ending his playing days, but leading to coaching. He was an assistant and then head coach at Allen Hancock College from 1960 to 1964. He then became a defensive assistant at San Diego State, where he coached until 1966. The NFL Oakland Raiders owner Al Davis hired Madden as a linebacker's coach in 1967 and named him as a head coach in 1969, at that time the youngest ever at age 32. After coaching, Madden worked in sports broadcasting for the next 30 years for all four U.S. major networks. He retired in 2009 and left the public eye, although he regularly gave interviews on radio about current affairs and sports in general and football in specific. Madden passed away at age 85. We hope you enjoyed this 84th episode of Bladed Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Once again, don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below. The community feed for this channel, our Instagram feed, in our minds page. We announce all new videos and post some unique content on those outlets. And if you prefer an alternative video distribution source, consider visiting our channel on Rumble. Thanks for watching.